let's start. I just want to tell several words about our first speaker, uh, Lukas Liebig. He's district director of seven counties at Toastmasters. It means that uh, he's a really huge director or something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the Czech Republic, uh, Romania, uh, Hungary, Ukraine, Slovakia, and maybe Belarus will join a district next year. Who knows? Uh, his job is to deliver uh, different workshops in European countries. Uh, he managed to deliver uh, his workshops in Amsterdam, in Prague, in plenty of countries, and now it's uh, Belarus. What is going on with his pre uh, presentation? Actually, storytelling. Sometimes when you're on the stage and you just need to deliver a speech for one hour, something like that, it's uh, really hard to manage attention to manage attention of listeners and he will describe some tips how to avoid such situations and now it's time to start Lucas Liebig <laughs> Lucas Liebig storytelling Ooh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before, before we begin, I take it as my personal responsibility to make it a really good atmosphere here. And in order to create a really good atmosphere, uh, it's important to have a compact audience. Before we start, I would ask uh, the people who are in the back rows to come over to these rows in the front. So please, people in the first, in the last five rows, please come closer. Please, please. It's going to be a lot, lot better. It's going to be a lot, lot more exciting when we are all up close here. Let's see. Vladio? Yeah, if you, if you, yeah, gentlemen, if you have a chance, Mike, this is so much better. Vladio, Vladio uh, Michael, if you can come closer, this is going to be, this, this is still a little bit far. You can do it. Okay, you can thank me for that later. Brilliant. Before we begin with the workshop, I would like to thank to the organizers of Toastmasters Minsk, to thank to Ivan for organizing this whole event. Quick survey in the room. If you already attended the Toastmaster meeting before, can you raise your hand? If you did attend the Toastmaster meeting, can you raise your hand? All right, excellent. This uh, whole event, it's like a tasting of what we do in Toastmasters. Toastmasters is an organization where we help people overcome their nervousness about public speaking. We help people practice communication skills and leadership. And great news is there is a Toastmasters club in Minsk, so if this day will be something that you find interesting, you will have an opportunity to talk to Ivan and Mikhail and a couple of the other organizers afterwards and thinking about, uh, thinking about joining. Now, for the workshop today, what do we have ahead? We'll be speaking about storytelling. Now, have you heard a word before? Storytelling? A couple of people, most people actually. I think nowadays it's even a little bit of a buzzword. Everybody tells you at work, you need to tell more stories. Storytelling is really good for you. It's good for your presentations. And I could speak a lot about storytelling, but I thought that maybe better than me just speaking about it would be if I let it work on you, if I tell you a story. Now, for me, to be able to do that, I need to employ a little emotional manipulation. And in order for me to do that, I need to ask your permission. Are you okay with me emotionally manipulating you for educational purposes? Would it be all right? <laughs> okay. I think we can, we can do that. Anybody knows what's the city in the back? Ladies and gentlemen, that is Kiev. Uh, as Ivan said, I, I work as district director uh, in Toastmasters, and that makes me travel to different places around Europe. For example, to Kiev. I love traveling to Kiev from Prague 
because the flights are very simple. They are direct and they are late in the evening, so it doesn't collide with my daily job. So it was, it was a day, it was a Thursday evening, I was flying out from Prague International Airport. I'm waiting for the plane and the plane is scheduled for 10.40 p.m., 10.40 yeah, in the evening. Now it's 10.10, it should be about the time to board the plane, but 10.10, nothing is happening. 10.20, nothing is happening. 10.30, nothing is happening. 10.40, nothing is happening, and I know already that I'm going to be really late to bed that evening. Now finally, they start, they call the passengers, they start boarding the plane, and we board the plane. Now I get on the board, the plane takes off, and the flight is quite uneventful. You know, I'm flying with Czech Airlines. I don't know if you have experience with Czech Airlines, but on the landscape of European airlines, you have, for example, Lufthansa, high prices, quality service. You have Ryanair, low prices, low quality service. And then you have Czech Airlines, high prices, low quality service. So you don't even get a cookie on that plane, which uh, is a bit annoying. Anyway, the plane, least flies directly, lands in Kiev, and as the plane lands and stops, I don't know if this happens to you, when you get on the plane, suddenly when the plane stops, everybody jumps out. Everybody jumps up, you know, from their seats, as if they were afraid that the plane is going to continue somewhere else. But I'm thinking, Lucas, you are a frequent traveler. You can just sit down and relax. So I'm sitting down, relaxing, looking at all these impatient people, and at some point after five minutes, finally, they open the plane and these people start leaving the plane. I'm thinking, ah, there is no rush. So everyone leaves. I am the last person to leave the plane and we get to the airport and then I see the sign, passport control. And all these 200 people are standing in front of me because I was the last one to leave the plane. I don't feel so smart anymore. That's okay, I wait another 30 minutes in the passport control. It's already 2 a.m., it's already 2 in the morning. Finally, I get through, I get to the cab, I take the cab to Kiev city center, and I get to the Hotel, Kiev city, Hotel Ibis Kiev city center. Now, the nice thing about Hotel Ibis Kiev city center is at the entrance door, there is a sign, and the sign says, we are expecting you. Mmm, that's nice, they're expecting me. So I get to the reception, and the lady at the reception, she gives me my key card. And I take the key card and I go to the sixth floor. I'm room 617. I go to the sixth floor. I carry my suitcase. I tap the card on the door. The door beeps. And I open the door a little bit. And I see hmm, there, there, there is some little bit of a mess on the ground. I'm thinking maybe they forgot to clean the room. This is a little bit weird. I open the door a little bit more. And I see the edge of the bed, and the bed is not made. And that becomes a little bit more weird. And I open the door a little bit more, and suddenly somebody shouts at me, hey! And what happened there was, and if I don't tell you what happened there, isn't it a bit annoying? Ladies and gentlemen, what's happening to you now is, right now, you are flying high on dopamine because you are listening to a story. Your body created hormones that made you really pay attention, that made you really look for what is going to happen next. And when I tell you what happened in the room 617, I can promise you, you will remember it for the rest of your lives. If I decide to tell you in the end, hmm, who knows? But <laughs> taking a step to the side, today we are together in this storytelling workshop. Now, in order to make it practical, it's important that you have a clear idea what is it that you would like to learn, what you would like to take away from this workshop, okay? I would like to give you now 30 seconds to take a pen and paper. If you do not have a pen and paper, I think Mikhail has pens and papers for a couple of people uh, to write. I would like you to write down 
one thing that you would like to learn in this workshop about storytelling, okay? Or write down one thing that you would like to learn. I give you 30 seconds to think about it and write it down. Is there anybody who needs a pen? Everybody? Very good, thank you. Hello, welcome. Please come to the first row. Come to the first row. It's going to be a lot better. Please, please, please come over. We have a space for you over here. Don't be shy. All right. Okay, 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. Okay. Who would like to share what they are planning to learn in the workshop? How about you, Anita? What would you like to learn? Yes, you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh-huh. Great. Well, you certainly did gave some thought to that before. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. One more person. What would you like to learn in the workshop? How about you? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Great. Definitely. All of these things we will cover in the workshop today. What is important, each of you might have a little bit different goals, but it's important also during the workshop that you keep your own goal in mind. And if you do not find out what you wanted to learn, feel free to grab me anytime during the break, anytime after the workshop, anytime during the delay later, okay? Now, the interesting thing about presentations in general is very often when we do in our work life, usually the presentations look a bit like this, right? facts, charts, statements, bullet points. You agree? Something like that. Now the question is, why is it? When all everybody knows it's so useful to tell stories, why do we not tell stories? And I have a couple of theories about it. Why is it that we do not tell more stories in our presentations? Uh, the main th reason, I believe, is that we are not confident in telling stories in business context. We are not confident in telling stories at work because we think that we are just not good at it. The first thing I would like us to do together is to prove that we all are storytellers. And we're going to do this using the couple in the back. Now, important thing, is there anyone in the room who knows any of those two people in person? Anybody? No. So they turtle. Okay, so you, you cannot answer the questions, okay? But everybody else doesn't know them, which is fine. What I'm what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you questions about those two people and you will shout answers at me. And the good thing is you can make the answers up, okay? You can make it up about these two people. And this way we will put together a little embryo of a story. So get ready. All right, let me ask first, who is the woman on the, who's the woman on the right? Who is she? Photo model, excellent, photo model. Which country is she from? Uh, br she's a Brazilian photo model, excellent. Who is the guy, uh, who is the guy on the left? So what? Her driver, he is her driver. Which country is he from? He, a driver from Bel Brazilian models, right? Driver from Belarus. Excellent. What is it that he has in the suitcase? Money. How much? He's got in his suitcase a million dollars. Excellent. Now, why is she smiling? She's going to get this million dollar. Hoo hoo. Mm -hmm. What is it that she doesn't know about him? He's not going to give her the money. Okay, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, but well, very good. I think we're, we're start getting some tension. Now, if we look at the photo one hour later, if we look at these two people one hour later, what will be different? Somebody from this part. <laughs> 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 
The money will disappear. Excellent. All right, so we got Brazilian model, her Belarusian driver with a suitcase of million dollars. She's expecting uh, him to give her a million dollars, but he will not give it to her. And one hour later, the money will disappear. Wow, not bad. It's quite a good start of a story. Quite a good start of a story. See, I told you. In a couple of seconds, well, a couple of minutes, we were able to put together a beginning of a story without any preparation whatsoever, without any coordination. The thing is, we are natural storytellers. We are used to tell stories. We tell them over a glass of beer, over a cup of coffee. We listen to stories since we are children. We watch, sto we watch stories in television. We heard our parents read us stories. Storytelling is a natural way of communication, actually much more natural than putting together bullets and slides and charts. Looking at the obstacles, what can they be? Well, you can ask yourself, why should I tell stories? That's one of the things that we'll address in this workshop, why you should tell stories. The second is where you can find stories. If you're wondering, but I do not have any, after this workshop you will know how you can find the stories and where, where to find them. And the third thing we'll look at is how to create the right structure for your story so that the story works the way you want it to do. Okay? That's what we're going to do. So the objectives, I want to explain you why storytelling is useful, tell you where you can find the stories and show you how to put them together. I think now we're ready for a little exercise. I honestly want to prove you that it's stories are everywhere. And ladies and gentlemen, stories are even in the objects we are wearing today. The clothes you have right now, they do have a story. So what I will want you to do, in bef not now, I will first explain, but after I explain, I will want you to make pairs and I will want you to think about an object you are wearing and tell your partner why that object has emotional value for you, okay? Let me demonstrate. For me, the one object I am wearing that has emotional value for me are my socks. Now, this might sound a little bit weird, but I will tell you something that's even more weird. I'm 35. Well, that's not weird. But I didn't buy my own socks until I was 32. It's true. <laughs> Same for you, right? <laughs> now, the reason why this happened, because until I was 32, it was always my grandma who would buy me socks. And my grandma, she's still happy, alive, and fine, but she's not buying me socks anymore. Because when I was 32, uh, and I like this personal development, I'm reading these self-development books, and at some point, you know, I've read about personal effectiveness. And I found myself one day taking the socks, pulling them out of the washing machine. And my grandma, she would always buy me black socks. But the problem was, she would always buy me different kinds of black socks. She would buy me like this pair here, and this pair with a little unicorn on the edge, and this pair was black and a little bit gray. And the problem was, when I pulled them out of the washing machine and I tried to sort them, it always took me like half an hour. I realized, like, look, as half an hour every two weeks, you're wasting your life away. I tried to convince my grandma, grandma, could you please, please buy me 20 pairs of socks the same? But my grandma was not so into personal effectiveness, so she never did that. What happened then is, I went for a trip to Berlin, I went to a store, and in that store they had a broad selection of colorful socks, and I bought two colors of socks, 10 pair of one color, 10 pair of the other color, and since then, my life is simple, and my grandma's not buying my socks anymore. Well, that was just an example, okay? This is why these socks are important for me. Now, what I would like to ask you to do is, I would like to make pairs, as I said, think of one object you are wearing, and tell your partner why that object is important for you. Now, before you start, one thing, one last thing is important. How do we bring the room back to silence? I have a little trick. The trick is, I raise my hand, and when, I ra when you see that my hand is raised, you also raise your hand. And the rule is, when your hand is raised, you cannot speak. Okay? Let's give it a try. I'll raise my hand. Ooh. Pretty good. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Yes, you got it. Perfect. 
everything is set before we begin the exercise. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Make pairs, tell them about the object you are wearing. One more minute, one more minute. Twenty seconds. All right, all right. Wow, that was fast. You are pretty good. All right, anybody in the room would like to share what their partner shared with them? Anybody heard an interesting story about the object their partner was wearing? Anybody would like to share? Oh, please. You can, you can from, from your sport, just make sure that you speak loud. Wow, good looking man. The applause. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> well, why, 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 since you started, could you please tell us uh, was it was it was it difficult? Was it difficult for you to was it difficult for you to listen to the story? It was very easy. Mhm. Mm uh-huh. You couldn't help listening. Now, isn't that wonderful? How often does it happen when we are giving a presentation? with bullets, that people just could not help listening to us. Mm. Not always, right? <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the magic of storytelling. Because by telling stories, we are creating emotional connection. And we speak in a language that other people understand. It's extremely useful to do just that. Now, the second thing is, was there somebody in the room who struggled to come up with anything to say? Was there somebody who had difficulty to say anything? No. It was fine, right? It was, we can just simply come up with a story. 
Now, the thing is, doesn't sometimes happen to you that your boss asks you to deliver a presentation and you just don't know where to begin? And it's exhausting to remember something? There's another magic with telling stories. It's easy to come up with stories and it's actually easy to remember them and tell them because this is how our brain is naturally working, how our brain is naturally organizing information in the form of stories. Let me share you wisdom of one wise man. His name was David J.P. Phillips, and he became famous by delivering a TED talk with the title Death by PowerPoint. Now, today we will speak about another TED talk that he delivered, and the TED talk was called The Magical Science of Storytelling. And in that TED talk, we introduced research that was conducted by American scientists. Well, it's always American scientists, haven't they known this? American, they discovered that actually telling stories, when you're listening to a stories, there is something happening in your body, that your body actually starts producing a specific set of hormones that changes your physiology and that changes the way you are processing information you are hearing in that specific moment. They call, he calls it the angel's cocktail. Hormone number one is dopamine. Anybody in the room knows what dopamine is good for? Yes, tell me. You can shout. Right, Bruce the mood, what else? Yes. All these things. Now, dopamine, you can, you can summarize, it, it's the it's a hormone of motivation. Dopamine, let me give you an example. You go to the gym, you exercise, you take a selfie, you post it on Instagram, you get a like. You got this heart on your screen, and so you get a little shot of dopamine. Now, the interesting thing is, it's addictive. So, you put your phone away, but one minute later, mm, maybe I got some more likes. Ah, another heart, another sort of dopamine. Dopamine is the hormone of achievement. It's a hormone that increases your focus and it makes you look for more. Now, this is useful to induce it in your audience when you're telling stories, when you're sharing important information, because in that situation, you want your audience to ask for more. The second hormone is oxytocin. Anybody in the room knows what oxytocin is good for? Right, pleasure, energy, it's the hormone, you can summarize, it's the hormone of human connection. It's the hormone of empathy. Oxytocin creates this feeling of bonding. We are all in this together. We are all one team, we're all humans. We all want the same thing. It's the hormone of human connection. When you are a speaker, it is important to create this bond between yourself and your audience. When you tell people stuff, you need them sort to have positive attitude towards you. Because if they don't like you, if they don't want to listen to you, you can say, no matter how smart the things you say are, they will not, it will not get through. It might get to their head, but it will not get to your heart, to their heart. So it's important that to induce oxytocin and by stories, you can do exactly that. Now, the last hormone from the angel's cocktail is endorphins. Let me give you an example. The last time when you went to a cinema, to a really, mm, let's say, exciting movie, so the hero had difficult life, difficult situation, and then there were some challenges, there were some obstacles, but the hero really fought hard, and in the end, the hero overcame the obstacles, he got what he wanted in the end, and lived happily ever after. And it felt good in the m after the movie, no? You left the cinema, you were happy. Remember that feeling? Now, funny thing is, your life was exactly the same as it was before. But after these two hours, after these two hours in a cinema, you were a little bit happier. It was because of the story. Stories can make you happy, and stories can make your audiences happy. And for you, it's useful to be able to make people happy because then they will want to listen to you more. They will invite you again to tell you more about what you have to say. So the Angel's Cocktail, Dopamine, Oxytocin and Endorphins is a brief summary why sharing information in terms of stories is so much more useful and what is the advantage of doing that comparing then to just sharing facts. Now, I see that you might have a little objection. You might say this. 
I don't have any stories. Ah, heartbreaking. I know. Well, let me, there's different ways how you can find stories. Let me introduce you one of the tools that you can use. From now on, you will never be able to say this because from now on, you will always be able to find stories in your life. The tool I'm going to introduce you is, you are one of the sources of stories. The important thing to keep in mind is stories come usually from the emotionally charged moments, moments when we felt strong emotion. And it may be the highs when you were super happy. It may be the lows in your life when you were super desperate, when things were co completely wrong. If you think about life as a roller coaster, it's all the ups and downs. Now, what I'm going to introduce you is a tool which is called Lifeline. I will draw an example, and after that, I will ask each of you on your own to draw a lifeline of your own life. Okay? Let me let me introduce this. We will do a little chart. This axis is the happiness axis. This is super happy, and this is super sad. This is time. This is when you were born. This is your life. And this is not when you die. We're not going to go there today. This is today. Okay? I already told you I'm 35, so I'm not shy about sharing it now. You don't need to write that down on your piece of paper. Now what I would like you to do is, I would like you to draw the happiness chart of your life. How happy or unhappy you felt in different stages of your life. Let me illustrate on my own life. I was born, I can tell you this, I was born happy. Now when I was about seven years old, they put me to a hospital. Nobody knows why, but they kept me there for about six weeks and they're doing some weird tests on me. I can tell you I was not happy at all. The food was bad, um, among other things. I came back. It got better. Seven years. When I was 13 years old, my parents, when I was 13, my parents got divorced. Uh, and things got a little better when I was 16. I met my first love. When I was 20, we broke up. Things getting a little bit better. I was 22, I met my second love. Ah, we started working. We broke up with the second love. Ah. At the time, already, you know, I was, I was in Toastmasters. Then I met Ivan. Ivan invited me to deliver a workshop in Minsk, and right now, I'm right here. Please take it as an illustration. What I would like to ask you to do now, in the next two minutes, on your own, in quiet, please draw the same lifeline of your own, and try to look for the specific moments that made you high or low on happiness, okay? Before we start, any question? Do you have any question? Is it all clear? Okay. In that case, I'll give you two minutes, and let's see what happens then. Two minutes. Thanks, Udmila. Thank you. One more minute. We've got a couple of people who started a little bit later. You just need to 
zip through your life faster. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Last touches. Okay, that was a good start. Of course, if you feel like elaborating on that one, you can do that later. What I'm looking for now is I'm looking for a brave woman or a man who would like to share their lifeline with us coming up here on the stage and tell us a little bit about their lives using the lifeline. Any volunteer? I have time. You need more time? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I understand. Sure. Still, I believe we can have one person to come up on the stage and uh, illustrate. Ivan. Wow. Applause for Ivan Pranovic. I'll take this one. Okay. Just, uh, I was born. It was zero years. Uh, actually, I don't remember. My parents moved to uh, another flat. They just told me it was natural. It was one year. After that, uh, uh, usually my parents share a story. When I was four years old and I came uh, on the beach and uh, with uh, one girl and said she is my future wife <laughs> every time I don't remember it actually I don't remember it but my parents remember and remind me every birthday okay it's uh, four years actually uh, I think I was happy at the time but I don't remember. After that, uh, of course, everyone goes to school at seven. Ah, I hate this moment. Why? Just because they took my time. I just didn't want to go to school because you should go to the lessons or something like that. After that, I just... Uh, 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 now I remember, it was one more girl, and I just uh, said that it's my future wife as well. Mm. Eight years old. Wow. What happened after that? I started playing chess. Great. I didn't li like this game, and uh, I won several tournaments. Uh, I won one of the best in Belarus at some time. It was 11 years old or something like that. And uh, I had a problem. I really hate losing games. <laughs> and after that, I just stopped training. And uh, people started to win me. And at 14 years old, it was something like that. I finished my uh, chess career. Wow. 
Uh, it was one more interesting moment of my life when my parents wanted to uh, see my uh, teacher in the school and teacher wanted to uh, see my parents. And actually the only party who was against, it was me. Why? Do not ask. I will not share. It was something like that. After that, so what I've done? I've just changed a school. It was possible without a uh, parent's permission. Why not? <laughs> After that, I entered to university. Sounds like that. And uh, I finished university. There are plenty of uh, interesting stuff and like uh, positive and negative after that. And one year ago, we started a Toastmasters in Minsk. And I'll finish it with that. It's actually a really great organization. I really uh, like being part of it and delivering some speeches some from time to time. It's really interesting. Thank you. Ivan, thank you very much. The one thing is, it doesn't mean that the only way to become happy is to join Toastmasters. There are different ways in life how you can do that. However, let me ask you now one question. Is, uh, if, you have, if today was the first time that you saw Ivan, if, can you raise your hand? If today was the first time when, when you saw Ivan over here. Mm -hmm. Now, after he shared his life with you, do you feel that you know him a little bit better? Uh, if Ivan asks you for help, would you be more willing to help him than a complete stranger? I would guess so, right? Now, that's the interesting thing, because when we are sharing stories, we all have so many experiences in life that are so similar. M we all fell in love some time ago. We all lost someone some time ago. We all had some difficulties in childhood, difficulties at school, with teachers, with, with our friends when we were kids. But these do not often come to the surface. But when you share things like that in form of a story, this will create the connection between you and the people who are listening to you. And this will make people understand that we are all the same. And it's really supportive in terms of collaboration. And the funny thing is it doesn't even matter which country, which culture you are from. I'm delivering this workshop in Singapore, in Austin, Texas. The people react the same everywhere in the world. Now, this is one of the ways how you can ask yourself how you can find stories in your life. Now, this workshop is called Storytelling for Business Professionals. So you can ask the question, Lucas, but this is very nice, but the, this is all personal stuff. Hmm? The thing there is, with the axis, it doesn't need to be focused on in your life. For example, if you want to find stories from your professional life, you can put there, for example, the, the year when you started working on your current company, 2014. And then you can put there today. And you can ask yourself how happy I was in my job. And again, you'll be, you will put there the chart, but you'll be thinking about different things and you will have different stories come up to your mind. That's about finding stories, one of the ways. Now, of course, not all the stories need to be yours. Another great story is, for example, your colleagues at work. Well, we tell stories to each other and not all stories you are telling have to be your own. Now, what is important, you, if the story is not your own, that to say it's not your own story. Uh, if I tell you now, if when I was in 1874 in India, like you will look at me a little bit strange. But if I tell you it's a story I read in a book, that would make it more credible. Well, let's read to that quote. Can the people in the back see what's written on the slide? Think, think of it this way. When you're building your storytelling repertoire, you are standing on the shoulders of giants. There are already so many stories out there that you can use the stories that are out there to your benefits. It does not need to be only your colleagues. Another great source of stories is media. We hear stories all the time. It can be what you see in the newspapers, in the magazines. It can be stories that you read in books. And these may be business books or these may be fairy tales. Even fairy tales most often, well exactly fairy tales very often do have a lesson, something to learn from them. And it can also be TED Talks. Is here somebody in the room who doesn't know what TED Talks are? Anybody who doesn't know? Okay. For those of you who don't know, it stands, stands for technology, education, design. Uh, 
the topics are even broader now. They're short presentations, somewhere between 7 and 18 minutes. And the speakers usually come with some interesting area of life. And I try to introduce a new topic to the audience. Now, because they're not speaking to experts, they need to use something to make everyone understand. And that's why they are using stories, because it's an easy way to make people understand. So TED Talks is not a great use of telling stories. Now, let's do a little checkpoint whether the storytelling really works. We're coming back to those two people, and my question is, who is the woman on the right? Yes, where is she from? I'm sorry? Well, if you remember about what we said before. Yes, she's Brazilian. What was her job? Yeah, she was a Brazilian photo model. Exactly. Now, who is the guy on the left? Driver. Where is the driver from? Belarus. What does he have in his suitcase? Aha. Uh -huh. Why? What is it she doesn't know? He won't give it to her. And if we look at it one hour later, what will happen? How cool. Completely random stuff that we put together 30 minutes ago, but you remember it all. This is the magic of storytelling. This is the way how to make people remember everything you say. It works. I told you. Okay, the next thing is I want you to practice storytelling a little bit more. What I would like you to do now is I would like you to make pairs and I would like you to think of a moment in your life that fits the description in the back. And I would like you to tell, to share a story from your life. Now, the I will have these four questions and you can pick one of the situation that is described up there, okay? Either think about moment when you had to make a really tough choice or say about a mo tell about the moment when you made a promise, you had trouble keeping it, you asked to do something you didn't feel good about, and asked to do something that you would make feel you're the founder of your company proud or felt conflicted about two separate values, okay? I would like you to tell about one, si one situation like that in your life. I would like to tell a little story to your partner. We will begin in 10 seconds. Any questions to that? Is it clear what I'm asking to do in the next? And we will have about two minutes. After two minutes, I will tell you to switch and then the other person will tell a story, okay? Any questions? All clear? All right, please think about a story, make pairs, and tell the story. Three, two, one, go.
30 more seconds before we switch. 30 more seconds before we switch. All right, all right. It's it's more difficult to stop now, isn't it? All right, just wanted to make to point out now is a good moment to switch. So if you haven't finished your story, you can finish in the next couple of sentences, then we switch. I'll give you two more minutes for the other person to share their story, okay? If you do not manage to finish, you can continue during the breaks. Okay, two more minutes for the other person to finish the story. Go on. One more minute, one more minute. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. All right, all right. Excellent. How did it go? Good, bad, terrible? Ooh, -hoo. okay, I like the sound of it. So now you tried. Now you try what it's like telling stories, and I hope that you will have some more experiences to exchange afterwards. This is just the beginning. Now there is still one more objection that you could bring up, and that's this one. 
ah, I can tell stories, but they don't work. Well, let me move this away. Hmm? My stories don't work. Well, luckily, there is a way how to make every story work. When I started this speaking stuff, I always thought, wow, storytelling, it's like black magic. <gasps> I'll never be able to do that. But luckily, it's not that terrible. In fact, you can think of creating a story as about cooking. Now, I know that for many people, cooking is also black magic, but it's, I think, more, more described as broad knowledge that you can actually do learn. You can actually cook if you follow the right recipe and if you have the right set of ingredients. With storytelling, it's exactly the same. Three ingredients that you need to put together are the following three. Context, action, result. If you like abbreviation, you can call them C-A-R or CAR. Ta -da. What are these? Context in detail. What do we mean by that? We need to first share what the story is about. We need to say, what is the subject? Who is moving the story forward? Who cares? In other words, who is the hero? Number two, what is the treasure? What does the hero need? What does the hero want to achieve to be happy? And third, what is the obstacle? What is in the way? If you don't have these three elements, it's difficult for your audience to understand what is it that you wanted to say. For example, the metrics. The metrics, well, it's happening in the metrics. That's the context. Now, who is the hero? This guy, right? What does the hero want? Liberate the world from the machines. Have uh, humans set the humans free. What is the obstacle? Agent Smith and the machines, right? Exactly. Now, the subject and the treasure, we often have them in the story. Now, what we're often missing is the obstacle. But I can tell you when there's no obstacle, there is no story. Let me give you an example. Let me tell you a story. A man wakes up in the middle of the night, hungry. He decides to go to the fridge, get a sandwich. He goes from the bedroom to the kitchen, opens the fridge, gets a sandwich, eats it, goes to bed. Do you like the story? <laughs> Some, something is missing, right? Okay, give me a second chance, please. Man wakes up in the middle of the night, hungry. He decides to grab a sandwich from the fridge. He walks to the kitchen, and the fridge is gone. When you're telling the story, you need to take the fridge away. You need to create an obstacle for your hero. Another example, Titanic. Has it, is there anybody in the room who did not see the movie Titanic? Everybody seen it? Great. Well, a couple of you, you can watch it for educational purposes. Ti Titanic, you get the idea. Ship sails off the shore of Ireland, sails across the Atlantic Ocean. Imagine a movie like that. The ship sails across the Atlantic Ocean, across the Atlantic Ocean, lands in New York. End of story. Something is missing. What's missing? The obstacle, the iceberg. There is no iceberg in the story. Ladies and gentlemen, in your stories, please, please make sure you do have your iceberg, okay? If th there is an iceberg in your story, it's going to be a story interesting to listen to. Now, the next, we're coming to A, action, metrics. Pff, all the time, right? Three movies, nine hours all together. And then result. When you're telling a story, you need to tell your audience what was the point of the whole story. Now, what was the... What was the takeaway from the Matrix? Hmm, I can tell you, I don't know. Matrix probably didn't have a takeaway. But <laughs> it was a movie. The purpose of Matrix was to entertain you. If you are telling a story in your business presentation, please make sure that you do have there the takeaway, right? The right lesson and why. So that was that. Context, action, result. Divided subject, treasure, obstacle, right lesson and why. Well, that was, little, that was the recipe for the storytelling. And if you do that, if you follow these three steps, if you understand the importance of stories, if you know where to look for your stories, and if you create your stories using this recipe, you will be on the right track to begin storytelling. I have a recap prepared. 
Uh, we can do that in two minutes. But before we go there, any questions? Is there anything you would like to know about storytelling that I didn't cover? Any questions on me? Thank you. Oh, wow, thanks for asking. I work in uh, MSD, it's an American pharmaceutical company. We have a large IT center in Prague, 850 people, a lot of super smart people, a lot of experts. And every week we have an event which is called Breakfast and Learn. And in this event, they always share what they are working on. And I'm not a technical guy, I'm not IT. And I don't understand most of the things they're working on. Uh, usually when they are presenting, I have no clue what they are presenting about. And I thought that was a pity. So that was maybe if we teach them how to do storytelling, that they will be able to share with their colleagues and make it more interesting for them. So that's why I started giving storytelling workshops at work, and it, it works nicely. Thanks for asking. One more question, and then we go to the recap, and then we finish. Please. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very, very important question. Uh, thing. Whenever you get on stage as a presenter, trust is everything. Because when your audience does not believe what you say, you can say whatever you want, but you will not move them to action. And in theory, you could pretend that you tell a story and you say it was you, and it would not be you. In theory, you could pretend. In theory, you could also even get away with it. But the problem is, you always know that you are lying. You always know, and whether you want it or not, it shows somewhere. It will show on your body language, on your facial expression. You will just not... I can speak about myself. I, in this, I did it a couple of times. It just doesn't feel right for me. And I wasn't happy with the presentation. I suggest always it's better when it's somebody else's story. Say it's somebody else's story. And then it's, you know, let's imagine I am that person, and then you can tell it in first person. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking. We'll have time for more questions during the break. I think now it's the time to recap and have a look what we did today. So we discussed what my flight to Kiev was about and how you can keep your audience's attention. Hmm. We realized that we are all storytellers, and storytelling actually helps you keep important information. You found out about at what age I started buying my own socks, and that each of us is wearing some object that is important for us emotionally. You can find stories in the objects that you are wearing. This guy's name is David J.P. Phillips. I suggest you look for his TED Talk. We like the hormones, dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphins. You think about your life as highs and lows. That's where the stories are. You can look for your stories in media. If you follow the recipe for storytelling, it will be easy for you. You got the matrix context, you got the subject, you got the treasure, you got the obstacle, you got the action, and you have the result of the story. Now, the very last thing is nice castle, huh? Coming back to the last moment in Kiev, what happened in the room 617? Do you want to know? You sure? Now, what happened in the room is I'm coming back to the situation. I'm opening the door, and that there is the guy, and he shouts, "Hey!" What was that? I look at the bed. And there's a fat, bald guy on my bed, in my hotel room. I don't know what to think about, but I also realize that's probably not the best moment to think. I say, "Sorry." I close the door. I go to the elevator, and I can tell you my heart is beating fast. I'm really angry, upset, confused. I don't know what to make out of it. I get to the elevator. I go to down to the reception. But as I'm waiting, somehow I am getting more relaxed. And I'm telling to myself, Lucas, it was on the door. We are expecting you. Maybe they were expecting me. Maybe there was a special offer of the hotel. Maybe they meant well. So I go to the reception, and I tell the lady, <coughs> I just registered for room 617. Uh, there is a fat bald guy in my bed. Oh, thank you. But do you have a room without? 
The, the lady was surprised, but she gave me another room 30 minutes later, I was falling asleep. And why I'm telling you this story is because what happened afterwards, I took out my phone and I write the whole story and I share it with my friend right after it happened. Because every day there are interesting stories happening to us, but only when we share them with others, that's how we remember them. So my last invitation to you for today is share the stories that happen to you every day. It will be the best way how all of you can become great storytellers. Eva. Thank you, Lucas, for your presentation. It's really awesome. And let's applause again. <laughs> We are going to start uh, our next uh, workshop in 10 minutes. Uh, now it's coffee break. You can uh, try Chinese tea or something like that. There are some packs. And of course, you are free to speak with our speakers and trainers. That's all. See you in 10 minutes.